All right, today I'm going to show you guys how to do a script sign on the CNC. So the first step is we're going to actually find our font. I like to use defont.com for this, and uh, you can see just right from the home page, there's a few different examples it gives you, and you can choose this sort of type. So basically over here, script, handwritten, uh, script, brush. So let's say that we want a script uh, brush font. The goal for this is to find one that really connects together. So this would be a good example, although that's a little bit thin. Um, you can also use uh, calligraphy, so script handwritten is also a good one. This one here, script calligraphy. Uh, there's a few examples. Let's say that we were gonna use this welcome font. I actually found a different one for this, but you can actually click into the font and see uh, what you're going to look like here. So Mallory is the name we're cutting out. Just gonna say large, submit, and you can see a preview of what you're going to get. So that's a good one because they're all connected. Uh, and the example that I'll show you today, uh, they won't be all connected and I'll show you how that works. All you have to do is click on download. Most of these are free. If you feel like it, if you make a bunch of money off one font, go ahead and donate to the author of the font. That's a good way to do that. So inside of vCarve Desktop, this is what we use to do all of our designs. Um, I'm just gonna say file new so that you can see uh, oops, don't need to save that. File new, no. You can see the initial setup. This piece, uh, we've uh, the max you can do in vCarb Desktop is 24 by 24. We've just set up uh, some ground rules 8 by 24 here. Um, might be a little bit bigger, a little smaller. We'll see. All right, 70 uh, three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, machine. I usually use the material surface and X Y position is bottom left. So I'll just say okay. And I'm going to use my text tool here, and I'm just going to type in our name, Mallory. Now this is the font here, Boulevard. Again, you can get that at defont.com. Okay, uh, the text height. So we can play around with this a little bit, and we can get the sizing just right. If I center this on the material, you can see we don't have much room to play. So five and a half inches out of our eight inch board is pretty much going to be it. All right, so... Um, if you do want to resize it, one way that you can do it is you can select it, use this uh, transform objects tool, and you can say, okay, our total height is 7.27. We can say, let's squeeze it in a little more and make it 7.5. And you know, then you can see we're, we're approaching these, these edges here. All right, the next thing that we need to deal with is this is currently type and the way to remove these overlap pieces so that the CNC doesn't cut into our L is to right click on it and we say convert to curves. Okay, so now we have these as individual pieces. These are individual uh, vectors. So this M needs to connect to this A here. The way that we're gonna fix that, there's probably a better way, but I use node editing mode and I just sort of zoom in and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these corner points here and I'm gonna move them up into the A so that we have some overlap there. And uh, I'll need to decide which one of these to grab. Let's see if I grab this one. That's not it. Be patient with me here. I'm not the best at this. That's the right point there. So now we've got that overlap there. Everything will be connected. The next thing we need to do is select all. So I'm gonna hit Control A. And sorry, go back to my regular editing, Control A to select everything. And then we need to weld these fonts together. So that's gonna remove those overlap sections. You can see I lost my center points there, so I'm gonna Control Z. And we're gonna select uh, all, and then hold the Shift key, you can deselect portions of the design that you don't want welded in. Okay, so these are all gonna be separate from the rest. Now we can hit the weld option, and you can see now it's all connected, one big flow. All right, the next piece that we're gonna do is on these smaller, you know, if you're making a really big one, you might choose to use a profile cut. I'm going to cut these out with a pocket, so I'm gonna completely eliminate the chance that, you know, a little piece gets caught in there, and again, we're just shift selecting all of these open gaps in the middle. I'm going to come over to my Toolpaths tab on the right, and we're going to select the pocket operation. Now, 
you're going to need to measure your board with calipers to see how thick it is. So in my case, let's assume it's exactly 0.75. I'll go like 0.76 because my bed's not completely flat. I'm going to use the downcut spiral eighth inch bit. You can import these tools from tools today. That's a really good way to do it. And you can see it has the exact numbers in here. Now you'll have to import the whole catalog and then you can just delete uh, the ones that you don't have or I made a favorites folder and saved the ones I actually use. Uh, so this is the actual one that I'm going to use here and uh, feeds and speeds come with it. Uh, the step over the past step, all of that, I pretty much leave the same. You can adjust it a little bit in carbide motion as you go. All right, so that's pocketed out. Just gonna leave everything else the same and say calculate. That's a warning that says it's gonna cut through and into your wasteboard, that's okay. And then the next toolpath we're going to do is just select the entire outside. And for this one, we're going to do a profile toolpath. So again, 0.76 depth. Uh, you can actually edit the passes here. So in this case, um, it's n basically changed my depth per pass to 0.1267 automatically so that I'm not making a last pass of just a tiny little bit. So within reason, you can do that. If I want to say uh, do this in four passes, it'll calculate and you can see 0.19 might be a little bit aggressive. Uh, let's say we want to do it in five passes. 0.152, that should be okay. Next thing we need to do is we need to add tabs. If you cut this whole thing out and it cuts all the way through to the wasteboard, well then the thing's gonna start moving around and you're gonna be in trouble. So we're gonna check add tabs. I usually do them about 0.15 thick and eighth inch long. I'm just gonna say edit tabs. And I wanna be strategic about where I put these. So I'm gonna put them on the points where they'll be easily sanded away. So I'll put one there. And you can decide how many tabs you want as you go just trying to get the important pieces um, we'll just do it something like that those should be easy to sand away what you don't want to do is put a tab like in here where you're gonna have to get in with like a popsicle stick and some sandpaper to sand it away right so that would be a bad position for those tabs that should be it on that we're gonna calculate again it's gonna say hey I'm cutting into your wasteboard I'm gonna preview all toolpaths And that looks pretty good. I'm happy with how that looks. Uh, if you want to see, you know, different colored woods, uh, you can do that. I usually just choose dark wood, and there you go. There's a preview. So that's pretty cool. We are all set there. Because I'm using the same bit for both toolpaths, I can actually export those toolpaths together. So I can say save toolpath, and I'm going to choose Shapeoko inch G code as my post processing and I can click Save Toolpaths to, to export that. And that will give you the toolpath file that you'll just plug into Carbide Motion to cut on your Shapeoko. Um, one thing to note with this is you want to do the pocketing operation first, okay? So you don't want to cut out the whole outline and be relying on those little tiny tabs to hold everything in place while you pocket these out. So do your inner size first, and that's determined by the order of these toolpaths. You can separate this out into two separate files. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, it just means that the machine's gonna do all the pockets, then it'll stop, then you load a new file, and you cut out the rest. But we're just gonna save this all as one. I've got my uh, folders here. Uh, Mallory, somewhere in here, right there. And I'll just save that, and that's all the file I need. So that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll take you over to the shop and, and we'll cut it out from there.